Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Bailey here. I post digital marketing related videos from time to time. If you are interested in getting into the media industry and learning about media buying, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you how to set up the line items in DB360. In the last video, we went over how to set up a campaign up until the insertion order level. Line item is one level beneath the insertion order and all the inputs in the line item level does affect your campaign delivery. I usually split my targeting at the line item level, but you can always do whatever makes the most sense for your campaign. Once the insertion order was created, you will be landing at a page similar to this one. It will be empty as there is nothing in it yet. Similar to when we created the insertion order, you can just click on the green buttons or new line items to start creating a line item. Then you will see this page. It breaks out the line items by the larger creative format, display, video, audios, and more. There is a short description of what each one is within each box. We will be looking at the display line item for this video. There are six major sessions at this level. Line item names, inventory source, targeting, budgets and fighting session, creatives, and conversion tracking. For the line item name, you can just type in whatever name that you wanted. I will usually include my targeting information for the specific line item for easier future optimization. If you know that the line item that you are creating is similar to an existing line item, you can just use the copy setting function to copy from an existing line item to save time. You can choose to copy targeting, budget, bit strategy, pacing, frequency cap, conversion tracking, and or, or creatives. The next session is the inventory source. If you remember from the last video, this session looks exactly the same as the insertion order level. If you have already set your inventory source at the insertion order level and know that it will be the same for all line items, we can leave it as it is. Otherwise, you can click on the pencil icon to edit. You will usually know when you want to edit this session. For example, if you are running a PMPs or a couple PMPs and you want to compare, you want an easier way to compare the performance between each PMP deals, then you would probably add the deals and inventory packets. The next session is the targeting session, which is also the same layout as the insertion order. You can use the pencil icon to make any edits that are particular to the specific line items that you are creating. Again, if you cannot find the targeting that you are looking for, you can click on the add targeting button to check if that's available. DV360 does offer a pretty extensive targeting capability, which we discussed it in our last video. The next session is the budget and flight related session. If you recall, we have set the budget and flight at the insertion order level. Usually, I would just use the same setup, especially when we first launched the campaign. If you know for certain targeting you only want it to serve during a specific time period, then you can use custom dates. Trigger allows you to instantly activate line item spans based on real world signals, such as sport events. Please note that your line item won't serve beyond the end dates at the I.O. level. Similarly, for the budgets and pacing, we can either use the I.O. budget or set a specific budget at the line item level. It doesn't matter how large you set the line item budget to be, it won't go over the I.O. budget. However, if you set your line item budget too low, then you're potentially at risk of underspending. As a result, I usually like to set my line item budget at a higher level or just use the I.O. budget. One I.O. can house multiple line items. All the line items can only spend up to the I.O. budget together. That means they share the same budget. Also, 
when I say that it won't go over the I.O. budget, it's only a relative saying. Due to the RTB nature of the process, we should always expect fluctuation. For the bidding strategy, I would recommend using automated bidding, but you can obviously set your own fixed bids if that works better for your campaign. For automated bidding, for DR-specific campaigns, you can choose to use maximized conversions or maximized clicks. For brand campaigns, you can choose to use maximized viewable impressions. When first launching a campaign, I would choose to prioritize spending the full budget for at least two weeks, allow the system to collect enough data to learn from. Then you can start changing your bidding strategy from maximize conversions or click to a targeted CPA. I would usually start with a really high target CPA bidding, then slowly lower that target throughout the campaign. If you set the bidding strategy to start with a really small targeted CPA, for example, $5 when the campaign is driving around a $30 CPA at a time, your campaign will basically stop spending after you set that $5 target. Frequency cap. I would recommend three impressions per day at the line item level, and it won't go over the total of 12 impression per month that we have already set at the IO level. Obviously, this also depends on the strategy that you're using. If this is for a retargeting line, you could be a lot more aggressive. Creative is fairly straightforward. You can click on assign creatives and select your pre-uploaded creatives. To upload creatives, if you use DCM for trafficking, the creative will usually link automatically from DCM to DV360, or you can also manually upload it directly at the advertiser level. The last session is conversion tracking. The basic idea behind this is to implement a pixel on the advertiser's website to track whatever action that the campaign is aiming to drive such as a page view, button click, or purchase. Within the Google platform, we call such pixels footlights. My pixels are usually set up in DCM and will automatically sync with DB360 if the two accounts are connected. But you can also use the floodlight provided directly from DB360 as well. The setup process and the instructions for advertisers' web posts are pretty similar. I like to use DCM mainly because DCM can help dedupe and attribute conversions across different platforms. In order to track a floodlight activity for a specific line item, we just need to search for the floodlight name or ID, then choose your post click and post view conversion windows. And that the conversion window depends on the nature of your client's business. Usually, post click windows is longer than post view windows. Luxury products can usually have a higher latency window than the CPG products. You can also choose to count all conversions, just the post-click conversions, or count a percentage of conversions. I usually count all conversions in DV360. We can always cut the data however we need it to be, but if we did not track the data, then there is nothing to work with. For example, in reporting, we can choose to only look at post-click conversions if we have both post-view and post-click conversions. If we only track the post-click conversions, then we would not have the data for post-view. I personally don't have a lot of experience with attribution models, so I can't really tell you which one is which or which one is better, but I usually use the primary model, which is the floodlight attribution model. I think it might be related to the floodlight sale up in DCM. That's it for today's video. If my video is helpful to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I will continue to post more digital marketing related videos in the future.